Ivy Valentine subscribes to Mark Yoon, so should you. Enjoy your treat! Soul Calibur 5 was really lauded as probably the worst Soul Calibur game. I know a lot of people like it. There's aspects of the game that I do enjoy, like the endless card battles and uh, the character creation engine is the best thus far, but they outsourced a lot of the game, like CC2 famously did their cinematics for their story mode, but the story mode was also cut by 75%. A lot of modes were actually cut that were supposed to be in there. Planned DLC was canceled because of the sales and the director fought, got fired. Harada was one of the producers on it and he never touched the Soul Calibur again since. So there's a lot of like negative connotation there. And I think the negative connotation somewhat feeds into why they did a reboot. Not just because it took so long to get this game made and Okubo and the director actually went to bat to try to get this thing made. Went through a lot of hurdles and had a lot of like heartache along the way and some of that was what they're going to actually do, what their plan was. Now their plan was to reboot it with a soft reboot so that like they didn't get rid of the things that they didn't want to get rid of from the past and have to retread old water, but they can kind of move through the timeline in their own way and do things differently. Now, whether you like Soul Calibur 5 or not is actually not the question here. That actually has really nothing to do with probably their decision to do the reboot. It's probably most mostly based on sales. Uh, the game wasn't focus grouped that well. So how they actually went forward with determining what needed to get cut and what needed to be avoided is probably up to Soul Calibur 5. Now, one of, at the time, a lot of people's big complaints about the game was Patroclos. Some people did like Pyrrha a lot, but Sofitia's kids pretty much threw a wrench into everything from where the story was going with 4, and 4 is where the story problems actually started, in my opinion. Uh, there's just a lot there that goes into Soul Calibur 5 and forced them kind of down that road, especially with Algol and characters like that who is in six, but it seems like he's actually getting a proper buildup and is actually building up to be a menacing character as opposed to just like a villain of the week. So those two characters, and not only those, but the forgettable characters that some people still like, uh, give them credit because some of their character designs are cool, even though they are a lot similar to their counterparts that were removed from the game. Fan favorites such as Taki, Killick, characters that didn't show up in Soul Calibur 5, but we instead got like Shiba and Natsu and characters like that. There was a lot of those elements that people weren't just happy with, and especially the story, which was cut by 75%, like I said, and wasn't actually, you know, that great. I did do a mini documentary uh, outlining how Soul Calibur 6 was made and the problems that happened with 5, so you can go check that out in that playlist. But for here today, what I want to focus on is the, the things that they're trying to avoid. And the time jumps are like the, probably the biggest thing they're going to avoid. Like if they do six going into seven, I believe there's going to be maybe a five year time jump just so you can get like Svi up to like 16 years old, something like that, or 17. That's going to be a lot more feasible and doable for them. And the fans are going to eat that up rather than just like, you know, <laughs> this giant gap where we're playing around with these like teenagers and young adults and all of our characters are not there and the ones that are existing are like super old and don't have much part to do with the story. Them as a company writing the game need to get people invested in the characters and that you do that through the story. So they heard people and they want to avoid some of that. Now I know there are fans of 5 and those people are allowed to like the game if the game is a piece of art it should be appreciated as such and people are allowed to like whatever aspect they like of it. A lot of people Soul Calibur 4 or 5 were like their first introductions to the series so they don't know what was like good before right. So the things they know they needed to avoid is the time jumps so that's not saying by the way that Natsu and Shiba and all those characters are not going to be characters in future titles. Um, I think they might, might just be side characters or they may give us their creation parts to be able to make them things of that nature. Uh, I don't think they're going to play as large of a role. Think of like uh, General Jiggerdot from like Soul Calibur 3 and characters like that that you meet in that story. How they pretty much give you the equipment to be able to create them as like kind of bonus characters, but they're not actual full-fledged characters that are in the game. Similarly, we saw with like Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition with Huang and whatnot, because Huang Sung Young is actually not in that game, but he is in the Arcade Edition. So I think that like these things that need to be avoided are mostly narrative based. Not many of them are character design based or decisions that they made with certain characters. But people want to see this new story go into fruition and it doesn't involve things like that. Which is why I've always said that a lot of the things that are occurring are down the same kind of pathway. Like Sophitia having a kid for example. But 
I don't believe that child is going to be Pyrrha. I don't believe there, that Patroclus is going to exist. Pyrrha may, it, it depends because uh, Duokalion, the uh, character's name who was, or the supposed name that was given the Greek name is actually still in relation to Pyrrha in Greek mythology as Layla pointed out in the research video for that. So I do think that like they can possibly do that, but, but my general takeaway is that those characters probably aren't going to be returning. So uh, to avoid that, they have to set up the story to go down a different path. So we have, we have Ishka Oct introduced and we have this new storyline where Algol is trying to break into our timeline and we have the Swords and the Shepherds being formed and going out after these shards of the evil sword in which Sofiti has one of them embedded in her chest. We have this whole storyline being set up where we're going to have this whole new story to be focused on and to be the centerpiece of, in which Pyrrha and Patroclus wouldn't even play a role if they were to be born. We already have Cassandra as like a replacement, quote unquote, for Sophitia, and even though their game play styles are not exactly the same, they can always do something like have Rathion be like an actual character and use that style or something akin to that, maybe just giving it to character creation or something. But I don't know exactly like how they're going to plan that out, but I do know that they are setting this whole thing up so that they can actually veer off in a different direction from where that direction went. So I don't think they're gonna be playing any the similar roles. Even Algol himself, which is probably the same Algol, is not gonna be playing the same role that he played in four and five. I believe that Algol is going to be looking for a new host body, so that he can actually withstand and gain more power in the Astral Chaos. So my choices right now are either Ishka Oct or Mitsurugi as to who he is actually going to try to possess. That's story canonical from like what he was actually saying. So that's why I think that. But there are other options, obviously, and the writing can change. From my understanding, the most of Project Soul is still exactly the same. Yoshinori is still the director. The writing team is still the same. Uh, even though some of them were helping with the completion of Tekken 8, they are still a part of Project Soul and would be same going forward. So whichever number of producers decides to step up and actually help produce the game is a different story, but the team is still intact from the prior game. Like Nobody's really shifted around too much, except for Motohiro Okubo, who was... Like, I don't want to say just an executive producer, but he was, he was basically just an executive producer who is now outside games. So with that being said, I don't know, like there's, it's really interesting how many directions the story can actually possibly take. But from my understanding, it is basically just to avoid the problems of Pyrrha, Patroclus, the threats that Algol positioned himself to be, and the removal of certain characters. By the way, you're going to be hearing a few new songs in this. It's from my new album that I made for the channel specifically, and it is called ADHD. And if you like any of these songs, you can actually find them on SoundCloud. I'll have a link in the description box. And if you want to download any of them, uh, just join the membership and you can join the Discord and you will be able to download them for free. So that's always cool too. A little self-promotion, just getting out of the way there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I think they aren't going to be doing the time jumps. Like I said, they're going to be moving this at a lot smaller of a pace. So if we do see a time skip, like I said, it's probably going to be about five years or so. But I want to hear what you think in the comment section down below. What are some of the reasons that you think that they actually did the reboot? I think it was basically fan perception, uh, getting rid of the characters, um, the, a drop in player base in Soul Calibur 5 and ultimately almost led to the complete destruction of the franchise. It technically did kill the franchise until it was like brought back on a whim. But uh, I don't know. Any all thoughts are always welcome in the comment section down below. But before we end the video, I do want to get to the poll that I posted in the last Soul Calibur video. Does Yoshinori posting his love for Soul Calibur help you believe that Soul Calibur 7 is still coming? And 64%, which is the overwhelming majority of people, said he believes it, so do I. 34%, which came in second, said I always believed. And 2% of people said I never believed. So those are the people that don't like fun. Uh, <laughs> this is at a, a pool of 214 votes, and you can see the comments as we were talking about them now. And uh, I will be doing the next video with Layla is probably going to be the next in the timeline differences video. And then after that, I might actually do a Stellar Blade review because I just want to complete the game before I actually do that review. So thank you guys for watching. Any little thoughts are always welcome in the comment section down below. And as I always say, guys, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.